Welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, where today will be part two of our discussion with Most Worshipful Brother Edward Woods, Grand Master of Masons in Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren all, welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, a casual conversation around Freemasonry. First, it's important to note that our thoughts and opinions are our own and do not reflect those of our Grand Lodge or respective craft or concordant bodies. Please connect with us and ask questions via our website at theworkingtoolspodcast.com. Today on the Working Tools Podcast, we have our, our four usual hosts. We have Worship Brother Jared Dunham from Penticton 147 up in Penticton, British Columbia. Worship Brother Stephen Chung from Prince Charles 153 up in Kelowna, BC. Uh, very Worshipful David Chung from King Solomon Number 60 in Auburn, Washington. And myself, I'm Matt Apple from Mill Creek 243 in uh, Montlake Terrace, Washington. And we have again our, our special guest, Most Worshipful Brother Edward Woods, who's the Grand Master of Masons in Washington. Most worshipful sir, thank you for gracing us with your presence again. Thank you for having me. So uh, last episode, we we heard a little bit about your your history in masonry. And I, I know David said at the end of it that he felt like he had a whole... <laughs> David has spaced out his name. So apparently I said his name wrong in the <laughs> intro there. Very worship brother David Colbeth has some questions. <laughs> not, not Chung. Not David Chung. I, uh... Steve and I swap names all the time. Did you? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, he's my brother from another mother, right? But hey, he's got way more hair. One, one day I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a little mask or something to put in my hand. <laughs> I apologize. Oh, that sorry. It's okay. It's just fun. It's fun. So, uh, very worshipful brother David Chung Colbeth Stephen, <laughs> did you have some uh, some questions there? Well, one of the things I for one of the first things I wrote down was that it was interesting that there was a year gap at least between when you were first kind of introduced, if you will, or paid attention. And then the next year you said, you said you went to one event and then it was a whole nother year later, basically before you went to another event. And so. I, I, w- I was slow on the uptake. No, I, no. I, I think it's, <laughs> I think it, it speaks volumes because a lot of people think that maybe you have to, you know, you have to get in now. And if, and yes, there's, you know, there's so much talk about membership and those kind of things and that, you got to follow up with these leads. Yes, we do have to follow up with the leads or follow up with the people that are interested and don't leave them astray. But I think I mean, we have a great master Mason right now in our lodge that he initially inquired in 2015 and then life happened. And then last year, or a year and a half ago, he re-engaged. And so it doesn't have to be at the speed of light when we're searching for the light. <laughs> so I was just curious of how that kind of happened. I mean, I know you were already connected with Casper, but. It, it, you know, it, I think it just, it, it, in this particular case, it was just the way things kind of worked out. I mean, I, you know, I, uh, Casper is, uh, he's, he's an interesting fella. Um, it, it's, uh, and, and I love him to death. Uh, he doesn't, he doesn't go to lodge as much today, you know, as he did before he he's, uh, you know, after he became master and went through the things that he had went through, he, he's kind of slowed down. And, and like I say, I see him once a month. Um, I don't know. I, I really, besides work, that was where I knew him. That's where I interacted with him. And, you know, during that year, I think there were opportunities where when they were doing the fireworks stand, Hey, we need some help, you know, you know, moving some stuff or whatever. And so it was just, uh, I, I hadn't given a thought to masonry. I didn't pick up on that. This was a group of masons. Um, I just, I thought, you know, it was a gracious invitation to come out to his, his home. Um, me and, my lady Carolyn went out there and had a great time, you know, met a lot of great people. And, and, but during the course of the year, I guess, unbeknownst to me, he was like introducing me to, to all these different people. And so when the second year came about, you know, I found myself kind of, you know, circled out in the front of the garage. I thought, okay, what's, what's going on here? And, and it was like, I just got, I just got questioned from a lot of, and, and many of those brothers aren't with us, with me anymore. They, they've since passed. Um, you know, Alan Plew being one of them, he was, he was an old, don't quote me on this, but I want to say a command sergeant major in the army. Um, great guy, uh, had stories that, that, you know, and all of these guys, you know, worked in, and like were in the military and, and in, in like the special forces arena. So they were all, they were all 
rangers or or work special forces so so to listen to their stories and, and the experiences that these men had um was was just phenomenal so i had already had a high level of respect for these guys already you know and then i find out you know year two these guys are masons and it, it was almost like uh okay dumb dumb are you are you gonna figure this out that that you know we're a bunch of masons and and uh you know what's going on and what's what's taking place here and, and i think really what it was was that they were in their own way without knowing it they were applying those six steps and i think that's why that's why i embrace the six steps as much as i do i just i think it's so important to have a process in place where you get to know people before you bring them full on into your lodge and, and like you said um the speed of light's not always a good thing um but my scottish right valley did the same thing with their degrees we used to do degrees on a weekend you know and just open the fire hose and just feed this guy everything that you could on on all of the compulsory degrees that you do starting on friday evening through saturday you know and uh at some point i was like this is this is too much i mean you know we're losing these guys they're not coming back they can barely comprehend the first degree that we've given them and let alone the other four that we're piling on at the end it's like something's got to change and it it I was finally able to convince my valley to, you know, let's let's do one degree like a month and then give it a month or two, you know, and I, I think there's something to be said for making people wait. Um, and, and I've done this with folks, too. They, they will come and talk to me about masonry. I won't go back and talk to them like I got I got a guy at work a couple of years ago. He's asked me about masonry and I answered his questions. But, but I've never went and pursued after the guy. To this day, some four years later, he still will occasionally ask me a question. But until he really makes that affirmative step, you know, and, I, and I've offered him, you know, hey, we got summer barbecue at my lodge. You're welcome to come and, and meet some of the other folks and whatever. You can only do that so much. I, th I think you put that out there. And then if, if it's something that they truly want to do, they will hopefully, you know, Come to that and reciprocate and i think that's an important piece there, there has to be some action on on their part um and and maybe i don't know maybe without knowing it you know that 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 had happened to me um is is kind of why i believe in that process i, I believe it works and, and i believe that it uh there's value in, in having that kind of process in place well I, I think you did show that right you you actually attended the event you can invite a guy to, to do lots of things, but if they don't take that first step. Yeah. And you, and you participated in a few things over that year, right? The, yeah. Helping them out and doing different things, right? So yeah, in, in a sense, they were putting you through those steps without it being as official uh, probably. But the I'm, I'm glad to hear that because uh, uh, so often things are rushed through much like your Scottish right experience there. Um, yeah. And our, our valley has has um had often been requested to do the one weekend thing like they do in vancouver and we we actually re just reject it every time because um you know this is a a lifelong journey and and uh there is no rush you know it takes you know uh now we have a three-year process pretty much it takes the first year we go through 14 degrees and then the next year we go through the uh rose Cross, and then we go through the last one's uh, uh, the following year, the consistory. And uh, yeah, it's it, it, it's much a much better pace for sure. Yeah, yeah, we we started doing, you know, like the fourth degree and then would read the next ones, right? With with the individual um, over the period of time until we got ready to do the, the other degree. Um, but, but what I will say now and, and getting to one day weekends, I think then you know, then the thing to do is send them to like Guthrie or something like that, right? I mean, if you're truly going to do um, a weekend kind of reunion thing, I think there's value in that. But but I even say after, you know, do do what's going to be done at the Valley first to, to get them there. And then as that capstone moment, maybe send them to Guthrie or someplace similar, because that, I mean, was like, I mean, my head almost exploded when I went there the first time. And then I went the second time. I'm going to oh, go again this year. never heard of this Guthrie. What's Guthrie? So Guthrie, Oklahoma, there's a, the valley down there. They do all 29 degrees in full theatrical costume on stage 
uh, as a as a theater production. Um, and it's and it's it's exhausting. It's it's every bit as overwhelming as as having them you know done in your lodge. But I think they're done in a way and at a pace to where you can kind of it's because it's like going and and you you watch us through the weekend. Um, and there's just I've I've went twice and I come back still just you know kind of my brain's numb for about a week after I get back home and it, it's it's one of those things I think I'll have to go to two or three times more in my lifetime you know to really to get that and I think because they tell you like in the Scottish right right they say through your lifetime you should attain the other twenty nine degrees right that's the goal is to go through all twenty nine degrees you know, in your lifetime. And I think that's an important piece there in your lifetime, right? Um, doesn't imply it has to be done tonight or, you know, over the next two days. And so it just, I think, I think we say masonry works at, at a snail's pace. I, I think it's meant to do that purposefully. Um, I think there's a lot of things that are meant to be at that pace. Um, and there's a lot of stuff we can do in between. Well, I think you, you, you've hit on significantly too the idea of self improvement and that it's a, it's a journey, right? You 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 kind of mentioned about being in traffic and one of our guys from our lodge he he would call me. He said, "David, I was really masonic today," meaning he didn't swear. He was, he's a truck driver. And he didn't <laughs> cuss out the guy next to him. And while we some of us may think of that, well, that's kind of a silly way to think of masonry. Well, a, the journey for a guy is completely different from the next guy, right? It's, you know, it's, it's about acting out of the lodge like you do in the lodge. Um, I, I think that's, a, that's another piece that, that I've seen. Um, you know, there, there's guilty myself. I mean, I, you know, I think, I think it's fair to say that almost just about everybody probably has that moment every once in a while where, where you forget, right? Um, but I think the key part is that you immediately remember and you recover from that and you move forward and it doesn't become that, that habit. Um, I think that's the important thing that we take out of masonry. It's, it's not that it's going to make me, you know, overnight become that, that good person that, that takes work like anything, you know, um, there's a lot of thought, a lot of reading. There's a lot of conversations that happen. I think before it's forming new habits, you know, I, I was, uh, when I first became a type two diabetic, the, the biggest thing that was kind of even from the doctors at that point pounded in my head was that, you know, you have to, you have habits that you need to change. Those habits aren't going to happen overnight. You know, I've been, I've been a diabetic for over 10 years. It's, I still struggle with it. It's, it's, uh, I have my moments where I just, I don't want to deal with it, you know? <laughs> and, but what's important is that I come back to it and, and, you know, make sure that, no, this is important and remind myself of that. And I, and I think masonry kind of works in the same way for, for a lot of things. Um, you know, we, you have work, you have things that happen with our families, you have things that, that are outside of our control. And I think these are the impediments that masonry gives us the tools to work through. Um, and sometimes we just have to work through that. That's, that's what I love about masonry. It's, I had a staff member to facility. She was a female. And I remember she asked me, she goes, I thought masons were supposed to be good people. Well, I'd like to think masons are good people. Well, I don't know. I, I know a mason. He's kind of a jerk. Okay. I said, newsflash, there are some masons that are jerks. I mean, it's, you know, some of, so there's some of us out there that just have not completely figured it all out. But, you know, so I asked her a little more what she meant. Well, you know, she'd kind of describe some behavior. And what I ended up telling her was like, look, I said, not all Masons are, are like, you know, perfect men, you know, that, that you would envision, you know, doing everything perfectly and, you know, never getting mad, never talking to somebody rude or anything like that. I said, some Masons need more work than others. And I said, what's important about masonry is that we understand that work and we apply that work to ourselves and through our journey, make ourselves that better person, right? It's, it's not a, a one and done. I don't just go get a degree and then automatically I'm a great person. Um, you know, it's, 
it's learning to identify those things you need to work on and then being able to apply those lessons to your life to, to do that. And so what I ended up doing, I gave her, I gave her the Freemasonry for Dummies book. And I said, here, take it home, read it, go through it. I said, if you got any questions, ask. You know, I said, of the ones I can answer, I said, I'll answer your questions. I said, but, you know, anything that's in this book, you know, we can talk about. And uh, I, I think that even for her, I think, you know, for her understanding what Masons were supposed to be, I think gave her that understanding and, and that, okay, it's, it's okay that this guy's, you know, every once in a while he's a jerk or whatever the case might be. So um, we're human. And that's what I call the human being factor. So, Yeah. And I also liked how you said that others were seeing the change in you and that, that really struck home that, and that's kind of, I think one of the main, one of the primary goals of our self-improvement process is so that we can be the example, hopefully. I was just at an event the other day and some friends I hadn't associated with for a while were sitting with some other friends and they were kind of almost sniding back and forth to each other and to other people around them. And then even to me, and I thought, I'm supposed to be your friend. And I thought, as I was doing some work later, I thought, huh, I mean, I don't want to pat myself on the back, but have I, have I grown? I guess maybe I have. And I look at that and go, boy, that was childish. That was not appropriate. So uh, it, was, it was good to see. Interesting to hear that you have other people have seen that in you and have expressed that to you as well. And, and that's why I think, you know, it, it's so important. Um, I think I said it in my message. You know, we, we hear the phrase masonry is to take a good man and make him better. And, and I don't think that's that's not, in my opinion, the complete statement. That's only part of it. It's that that in part is what we do, but the overall overarching thing that we do is we we give men the tools to improve society, right? Through their through their behavior and their actions and the things that they do, and it's and it's not just what they do with themselves; it's it's what they do with themselves once they go back into society, um, and go back to work, go back to you know their their ladies and and work with their kids or whatever the case is. I mean, it, it becomes, you do outside of the lodge, what you were taught in it. I mean, that's part of, you know, the installation, you know, that we have, you know, where it talks about admonish them to do outside the lodge, what they do in the lodge. Um, and I think that's the part that we have to remember. Social media is, uh, it's kind of a prickly thing, right? I mean, it, it can be a beautiful thing in that you can share a lot of great things on social media and get a lot of good things done, but you can undo that goodness so quickly with, with just one or two posts. And, and I think it's, you know, getting people to understand, you know, we have to quit being reactive. We have to quit being, you know, reactionary and, and just saying mean and nasty things. It, it's you've got to push that pause button, you know, sometimes and, and walk out of the room, you know, take a couple breaths of air and then come back and, and go at it. And I think that that's, I think that's what our society needs right now. I think our society needs to learn how to pause and, and reflect a little bit before they, you know, just respond back to the first thing that's said. Um, and, and I think we see it in our media. We see it on social media, what the result of that is with, you know, shootings on the freeway or, you know, nightclubs, you hear about an argument that took place and, and you know, so what do they do? They go right to the handguns. It, it just, it's crazy. You know, um, kids, kids have a bad experience in school and the next thing you know, they're getting their hands on firearms and, and you know, you have, you know, mass shootings in schools. And I think that, uh, I think we as, as a society have lost touch with how we need to act as human beings, how we need to treat each other as human beings. Um, and I think masonry has a lot that can can help with that. Um, so, and so it's going to take a lot of work. Those, speaking of those types of things, um, you know, your year as as grandmaster. What, what's uh, what's on your agenda? What do you want to achieve? What what do you where do you want to make a difference? So I've I've got a few things. I mean, you know, um, my theme for the year is Nothi Soten. Uh, which means know thyself. 
I think I think it's important that that we remind ourselves that that we need to take a look at you know the Grand Master from Prince Hall. I just went to their annual session last week, and his was you know look in the mirror. It, it was just uh, I, I read that in his message, and I was like, yeah, we're we're talking the same thing here, right? We we have to start looking at ourselves. And then once we look at ourselves, if you don't like what you see, you need to change that. Um, and, and we've got the tools to do that. And, and for us as a fraternity, um, I, I, you know, my my goal is to take masonry, you know, in, to, to a better place. I'm not going to fix all the problems in our fraternity. That it's I can't do that in a year. I can't do that myself. Right. That's going to take every brother in this fraternity to. Um, to do that work and, and we will get there. Um, but it's, uh, I've identified a couple of things, um, you know, so, you know, that are on my immediate list. Um, you know, the first one, which Grand I was Master, kind of, uh, Grandmaster, Grand Grandmaster, if we could, I think we'd really like to have a, a, a clean segment to really focus on your message and whatnot. And so, yep. uh, maybe we can come back if Matt, you want to segue us out here and we'll, we'll start a new, new segment for you. Okay. I'd be happy to, but first I have the most important question of the evening. Is that a bat hanging behind your head? It is. Okay. There's, there's sure. all kinds of interesting things behind me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole As the guy with the himself. computer who can't handle running the virtual background, I, I appreciate that you have a, an interesting things to look at back there. So um, on behalf of, of uh, David and Stephen and, and Jared and myself, thank you, Grandmaster, for, for being here. We appreciate you. And uh, we look forward to talking to you again on the next episode of the Working Tools Podcast. Goodbye.